What's up YouTube? This is Arm, bringing you my very first YouTube video and a consumer slash game review of the NVIDIA Titan X. Now this card launched to not a lot of fanfare on August the 2nd. It was a complete surprise to everyone that NVIDIA was launching their flagship flagship several months before most people were really expecting it to show up. An even greater surprise was, well maybe not a surprise, was the $1200 price tag that came with their new flagship since the video seemed to be on a roll with bumping up the cost of every card in their lineup. Now, although this was really marketed as a deep learning card, the gaming community was like, we gotta have this card, and it's really taken off for just how well it performs in 4K 60 frames per second. In fact, it's being held as the first true 4K 60 frames per second card that the GTX 10A was not quite capable of reaching. So I have a couple of benchmarks, so let's hop right into those. Alright, to start off with, Mad Max. For reference, all games are run at max settings with VSync enabled, just to keep things stable. This card loves to boost a little crazy hard, so I wanted to make sure it didn't crash in some of these games. Uh, various games I tried, like uh, Just Cause 3 or Shadow of Mordor, I did not include because they were just not being friendly with this card when it was overclocked. They would crash within a couple minutes. Regardless of whether or not Heaven, Cinebench, or other games like these ones shown here were perfectly stable. Uh, pardon my erratic driving, I'm trying to push this card a little bit on this game, but it's really hard to actually push a card with Mad Max. For a 4K title with pretty impressive visuals and lots of particle effects, it runs very, very well on just about anything. With my old 980 Ti, I can pretty much hit 60 frames per second in 4K with this game maxed out. The card is actually boosting to 1974 MHz right now, which is pretty much the maximum overclock you can hold for a sustained period of time as long as the car doesn't get too hot. Usually once it gets over 80C, it starts to downclock, and we'll go into more detail about that later. GPU Boost 3 really gives these cars a sort of attitude, at least on the Titan XP. If you really, really have to push it past 80% to actually get it to boost or even recognize your overclock in a lot of cases. I'm pretty sure I'll figure out how to force it to overclock at some point, but I don't really see much of an issue with how it is right now. It really doesn't run that hot when you're not boosting, which, if you're running the stock cooler like I am for now, that's really a good thing. You really don't want this car getting too warm really hard to maintain a stable overclock once it starts to get hot, and we'll talk about more of that later. Alright, here we go. Everspace Beta. Brought to you by the developers of Galaxy on Fire on iOS and Android, supposedly. You can definitely see their influence in here. That's really my favorite iOS game of all time. And they've really, really pushed what you can do with the PC with this game, the visuals are pretty damn impressive here. Alright, let's see if we can find some action to show you guys. This game is being run at max settings, it's just one preset, epic, it goes low, medium, high, ultra, epic. I'm hoping eventually it will have real graphical settings versus just a single preset. Although this epic preset seems to add things like ambient occlusion, soft shadows, some extra particle effects that push things a little bit further. We are boosting slightly, around 1700 MHz right now. It's still a pretty decent boost, but nowhere near the 1900 MHz overclock I have on it normally. Oh, first person. Where are the aliens? Okay, I think we just found some. That's a laser. Why am I running away? There you are. This game is really cool. It doesn't even have a, really have a story yet, and it's already cool. And 
Let's try to push it. Boost. Alright, this isn't really taxing. Let's get into something a little bit more so. Alright, Batman Arkham Knight. Hey, whoa. 2000 megahertz even boost clock. Okay, that's nice. And we're down to 1987. That's kind of how it goes. You start a game, 2000 megahertz, 1987, then 1974. And once it starts to get above ADC, then you'll see that drop down to 1936 or the standing base of 1911 when you're boosting. We are all maxed out, all the game works are on. Need to make this fair. Pick this up for, I believe, $10 off of G2A. I do remember a time distinctly when I believe it was $1.67. That's US dollars, that's not Euros. That's a tenfold increase. It's actually worth ten dollars now. <laughs> Did you see the look on that cop's face when he turned the It is pretty impressive though. Us. We are getting a solid sixty FPS right GCPD. now. And let's push things a little bit. Find some idiots to punch. And smash. By the way, I have not played this before, so if I stink at this, forgive me. It's not that much different from Mad Max, to be honest. Overall, punch, dodge thing, same thing for Shadow of Mordor. Anybody else? And crunch. Wow. That was pretty satisfying. The rain effects are pretty impressive, too. Let's see if we can push it. It's too bad you can't use your 60mm cannon on these guys. I suppose that would make it boring. And I can't drive. Come on. Let's try to get the camera in that smoke. Okay, we're finally getting a drop a frame or two by sticking the camera on the smoke cloud. But yeah, this game is pretty locked at 68 4K. Alright, here's an example of a double A title that both looks good but is also pretty poorly optimized The Technomancer by Spider. Some people like it, some people hate it. It's a little dull, but it's not. Terrible. I mean, they're far worse games to buy. Textures are actually pretty impressive. As you can see, we're not really holding 60 FPS in this title. Despite not really looking any better than the Arkham Knight, it's getting a good bit worse performance. But can't really expect too much from a title like this. It's just not going to be optimized. And don't even think about SLI because something like this is never going to support something like that. This is as good as it gets. <sighs> well, since everyone else is doing it, I figured I might as well. Here we're on Skellige with Witcher 3. 4K, max settings, hair works on low, all, with two times anti-aliasing on the hair works. And I don't remember the control scheme. And they changed things again in these latest updates. I don't need a tutorial. I don't know how to swing a damn sword. 
Ow, 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 wow. Wow, I stink at this. Good thing I over level, I'm dead already. This game is still very pretty even year on. Especially if you are into modding and want to get this even better. Skyloga really is my favorite, both you know, just the aesthetic and the really nice on the music. If you really want to push your GPU, it's not the towns of Novograd or some of the other towns that really push you. It's really the forest. If you really want to push your GPU, you just run into the forest and see how the frame rate drops. We're putting, we're putting out some pretty decent frame rates here. I mean, a couple little drops here and here. We got into the mid 40s in that little fight, but Hairworks is on. I don't even get this level of stable frame rate on a 90 Ti 1440 in the forest. It's really, really impressive. Alright, here we are, Mirror's Edge Catalyst. This is my current favorite game, and also probably the most taxing game I own. Those hyper settings are really, really brutal on everything that you try to use with this game. Full hyper, we're running at 2560 by 1440 at 1.5 resolution scale. So we're getting this pure 4K here. As you already noticed in the left corner, I've started recording this after playing around for a minute or two. We are already at 85C. This is getting a little uncomfortable for me in terms of temperatures. I never let my card ever get this hot before. And we are all the way down to 1911 MHz. This is about the highest you'll get running a game maxed out once it starts to get hot. It won't go any higher than 1911 MHz, even with a 90C temp target. So we're getting some pretty decent frame rates considering this is full hyper settings. We're well above 7 gigabytes of VRAM usage too. This game murdered my 980 Ti on 1440. I know they've optimized it a little bit in the past few weeks and kind of lowered the VRAM usage, but it still gives it a really good thrashing. Let's see. Let me find some action, see if we can dip it any further. Skybox, 60 FPS, look at the ground, we're getting around 49. That's the one issue I have with the card is the heat, and that, that really will end up being a hidden cost for a lot of people. If you really want to push this card to the max, you're going to have to invest in an aftermarket cooling solution. Either doing a little modding yourself, modifying the cooler, getting like EVGA hybrid cooler, they do fit. It'll look a little ghetto if you rig it up like that, but you will get much improved temperatures and we'll get the core over 2 gigahertz. Or go the more expensive route and go with EK and get a full water block for it. I do love how sharp this looks. I'm a big fan of cherry blossoms. This game has gotten some nasty dings for, oh, the story being a little too thin and whatnot. Wow, look at those textures. But anyone who dings it for aesthetic, it really isn't worth listening to. This beautiful zen thing they have going with this whole game, especially in the high cast district here. With the insane cloth textures, reflections, water effects. Just that beautiful lighting. And we're in the mid 40s. Frickin' camera. Ruining my little monologue. Let's see. Wow, frame rate's actually going up doing that. That's weird. Hey, 
wait, no, wait, no, wait, ah. Okay. Whatever you want. Someone likes pink, apparently, in the developer team. Can't say I'm a huge fan of the gravel texture, though. That is a little bit of a bump. Another camera. We're still holding at 1911 megahertz, surprisingly, but temperature really is starting to get up there. And this is an 83% fan speed. I mean, you can go higher, although I have noticed once you go up to 100 fan speed, it will actually damage the overclock to some degree because that fan is actually sucking enough watts that you're actually lowering your power target to the core. Probably guess it's using at least five watts, spanning at 100% speed. One thing I can look forward to when getting a water block: get rid of that horrible fan. And we're gonna have some company. All right, let's try some combat. Let's see if I stink as badly as this. I do a Witcher. Take it. Missed. Ooh. Bosh. Ooh. Too many. So far, I'm really, really impressed with this card. Temperature notwithstanding. Fourteen forty P gaming, this thing will max everything out, won't break a sweat, and won't even really get hot. Four K gaming it does very well, although if you want the best possible frame rate without it sounding like a jet engine, you're really gonna have to get a water block for it or a hybrid cooler, modify your own sort of thing. I've seen a few Reddit threads on that. Gamers Nexus has made their own hybrid, got it over two gigahertz. And this is without V-Core control. They will be releasing V-Core control on the Afterburner at some point. Ooh, no, that's gonna hurt. Get wrecked. Take a hint. Long way down. Bye-bye. Yeah, I'm very impressed with this card. 1200 bucks, it's worth it or not, that's really up to you. For me, it's worth it, even if a lot of people call me crazy for buying it. If you really want the best 4K performance on a single card, this is your solution. I'm Arum, and thanks for watching. Catch you in the next video.